data normalization deals with um, having less data redundancy in our in our in our tables. To view this, let's go to the data base tools tab and click on relationships. And in the relationships area, let's go back to the design tab and click on show tables. And let's double click all the tables here because I want to show you. Each time you double click or you click on add, it will add the table in question into your database design relationship area. So these are all the tables. The first table I'm highlighting is the bad table. I named it the bad table. It's a table contain it's a student table containing all the records we want to save about a particular student. The problem with this is that maybe as I go to the second record in my table design, that student might not have a, a second phone number, meaning that field will be empty, or the student does not have an allergy. That means that field will also be empty. So in building a, a table like this, a lot of fields for a lot of students could appear as an empty field. And later on, when we learn about how to question the system, the system will, be, will begin to get slower and more clumsy because the, the, the search criteria will be searching across multiple fields which have a zero or null value. I also created other tables which are subsets of this bad, bad student table. So I broke the tables down to student primary. So this contains primary information about a student of which every student will fill in all this detail. Then if the student so happens to have a phone, then this table will take care of that initial phone. Then another table would, would take care of the second phone number of that same student. Then we have an allergy table. And all these tables, I have the student ID as the primary key. Then I have the guardian information. So as soon as we get the guardian information of a particular student, we quickly enter it into this table. Let me go quickly to the table itself, the table design. In the primary table, the student ID is an auto number field. So the primary table. Um, student primary to design the student ID is an auto number field because we want to auto um, assign IDs to students but in the other tables like the guardian table though the student ID is the primary key the data type is not auto number it's actually rather it is a plain number and I've set the field type to long integer the reason being if my first student, uh, I entered information for the first student and his auto number becomes one, I don't want to, the guardian table as I enter to automatically say one. Because when I get to student five and he ha doesn't have a guardian, guardian information, that number five for auto number for guardian will be empty. And if I go on to insert a sixth student, and I go back to the garden table, it will not give me a number five as the auto number. So now I'll create drop downs maybe later. So that in my garden table, I can select the right student and enter his garden information. Another way to go about this is actually in, within the database relationship area. Once I create the primary table, because all these student IDs are uh, numbers and long integers i can actually drag them onto the st uh, student id from the primary table to create a relationship and i can enforce the relationship meaning in my first table in my alleged table it relates to the student primary table using the student id in both cases and if i were to click on cascading update it means if i update the student ID in the primary table, it will update itself across board. Cascading delete means if I delete a student ID in one table, in the other table, the student ID will be deleted automatically. So let's enforce our referential, referential integrity and create a 